Okay guys, so it's Max here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to build one of these. Now this one's, you know, it's it will, it will work, and it's going to be slightly different. They don't have a connector, they have a permanent wire in them, and this is glued in. But this, as you can see, has my name on it. It's mine, I don't really care about it. When I make them for other people, they are very nice. Uh, but here, here is what we're going to build, so let's get into it. Okay guys, so this is what I did. So I measured, I don't know originally how I came up with the measurement, but it's 72 in height this way. And no idea why, but basically I have, I think it was a decent size really. It was originally based off of this one over here, which is a different kind of mount. It hangs on the wall, which is the only one of them I've ever done. But, um, so this is bigger because you get the base that goes in there, so it has to slot in, so it's bigger. And this has a 10mm gap all the way around. And this one is 26. But all the font sizes are all the same, the only thing that changes is the font um, type and the length of the thing. So once you've done that, you then print it off on some card so it's quite strong. And then, voila! So this is on some card, and as you can see I've basically just cut out the black. So I forgot to film doing this yesterday, but all I used is basically, you know, you put it on a normal cutting mat, uh, use a Stanley knife or a crafting knife and just, just... If you have more straight edges, like this one again, then you can use a ruler to get them exactly straight. Okay, so before I forget to like film all this, so all, these aren't stuck down yet by the way. So I've just got these that I showed you how to cut out and how to design last time. Now this is just some 12mm Perspex um, acrylic stuff, basically just plastic, clear plastic. You can get off eBay, I'll link where I get it down in the description where you can check that out. Um, but yeah, one, once you've got that, you want to uh, basically use some thin double sided tape, you know, just the normal cheap stuff off eBay. And then it's easy to tear because it's got a layer of paper on top. You just roughly eye it out, you go, yep, that looks about right. You just tear it and then you put it on there and try and get it so it's touching, but definitely don't get it so it's overlapping. Like you want to make sure it's either touching or back a bit, but you don't want it overlapping because then it will get in the way when you um, start etching it in. So this is, um, I basically go around and try and get it in as many of these gaps, so you want it for this and round the edges, like in the corners. Uh, on these corners, these are always a big thing, you want to make sure they're stuck down properly because it, it will go this way by the way. You want to make sure there's tape underneath there and that will stick down properly. Um, and then you've got to stick in all of these bits that go in, in there so you get the, the border which you put double sided tape on and sometimes they get fiddly. Once I've done all the double sided tape uh, and I've got it stuck down I'll show you what to do next. Okay so, for, so once you've done that um, I'm, I'm talking before I said I would, but uh, you then want to, you can overlap them a bit, but obviously you need to peel off the backing, but it doesn't matter, like if you go in, as you can see I've gone in here and here and here, because when you peel off the backing it gets really floppy and you can just fold it round to the front, so you just want to do the tedious job of uh, peeling all this stuff off and I'll, and I'll get back to you. So guys, before I get too busy and uh, doing the other parts, I just want to show you um, the because I almost forgot to show you. So for the middle bits I'm on about, I'm really bad at doing this video. I hope I hope some of you are still watching by this point. Um, you grab one of the little A's, centre of the A's, and a little bit of tape that you think is right. I literally just guessed that. Sorry, I'm completely out of frame. Um, and then just stick it on like that. So it covers it, so it's within the uh, within the tape. And then find the edge, which always takes forever. There we go. So then it becomes really clear. Uh, but when it's clear, 
and peeled off it becomes really floppy so then you can just fold it round the sides like that and like that making sure that you still know which side is the base side and then find which way up it goes and then put it in this isn't an A actually this is a D but never mind and then try and line it up as best you can I mean you're never going to get them perfect but you know you can see there I did a pretty good job and you want to make sure it's kind of got it around the edge so as you can see I've done it with this A here as well so yeah I'm just going to carry on doing this last one and then I'll show you what to do next so here they are and uh, once you've uh, done this you obviously want to make sure you peeled off the plastic stuff already so you're not sticking it on that because when you etch it will just be annoying uh, so that and then this is because it's got a lot free I'm keeping the plastic on this one this one I just peeled straight off sorry you can't even see that um, but I did want to put this this way because then I could fit one along the top a long one and then one down the side if I needed it because it would be the right height because all of these are the same height well apart from that one um, but then when I stuck it down I realised I did it the wrong way which was clever of me. The reason for sticking it down now before you cut it is that you then, when you get the saw, you can just use normal wood saws, what I use. Uh, you just cut it around the sides uh, and then you get the exact size. And then what you do is you file around the edges and then sand around the edges just to get rid of the saw blades. I get the saw and cut stuff because I'm gonna saw it anyway. Uh, and then you just sand it back. It's about a pound cheaper, so you know, a pound for some smooth edges that you can make yourself. Anyway, I'm gonna get on with cutting this and I'll be back. Okay guys, so before I forget and do it all without showing you again, which is the whole blooming point of this video, I'm just going to show you what to do, because I've already done three, no, two of the four, so before I do it. Um, so if you can hear me over this, but this is basically just um, a battery powered Dremel thing that was like 20 quid, but you don't have to use this, you can get the, like, the little tips if you look for them on eBay, and they, they fit on a drill because they're just like a normal, just a normal circular thing that will go in a drill chuck which I did to start with it's just easier um, this is more like using a pen so you can get more accurate because you can hold it better so um, basically once it's all cut out and everything I didn't bother about filing it down yet um, but uh, yeah you just do this with it and you go around the edges first and try and go in one direction don't like go squiggly blah. It'll look nicer if it's all in one direction and all kind of the same depth. You'll get used to it. I'd, I'd probably recommend doing a test first, like um, on a, a bit that you maybe cut off or a little silly off cut that doesn't really matter and maybe try getting a nice stroke, getting a consistent depth because when it's this wide you want like a consistent depth so you've got to go back and forth. But yeah, I'll be time lapsing this one from now on. Uh, so yeah, hope you enjoy. There you go. And then when it was, it looks like it's got blue tint, but that's because of the back film. So when you take that off, it becomes clear. And then you, when you light it up, you want like an even depth, like I was saying, because then it lights the letters up evenly um, and doesn't look weird. Whereas this one looks very nice. Um, so now I've got to do it with this one. This one's already etched, so you know you just peel it off. Um, and I'll be back to explain the next part. So once we've engraved it with the Dremel and peeled the paper off, uh, there will be some bits left on. So here's a perfect example. As you can see, like there's loads of bits everywhere. Don't know why that one was so bad. But um, if you just put WD-40 on uh, and then leave it for five minutes for what I've just done, and then when you grab like some kind of rag and then you start doing this, it all just kind of comes off really easily. And uh, you need to like put it in the light against the reflection to see if there's any bits or anything and then that that looks pretty clean to me you see there's not nothing on there that stuff on the that's on the back you go see gone there you go and then that one's ready I've done that one as well so then I've just got one more okay so before I do this all like off camera like that. Um, I'm just going to show you what I've just done. So I've got you know, a tape measure, some 12 mil wood. I can't find any more. I'm uh, losing short on 12 mil. Um, but I have this one I've made already. It's one with my name on it. 
Um, but so I just measured that, and it's 50, but it won't fit in the switch. So I've now made them 60 in depth, as you can see there, a little bit longer, uh, wider. So that will solve that problem. So the switch will go in, uh, and then the piece of acrylic still be centered. That's not for that piece. Um, then I've measured the length and uh, added on 15, which is the same that's on this one here. So I've just gone, used the tape measure, put it 15, added on 15 on the other side, and then that's the measurement, and I use that to cut out the pieces. They're also going to have a 6mm plywood top, which is the exact same size. And I was going to do plow on the bottom because it looks nicer, but I don't think I have enough. I mean, I might, but I don't think I do. If I do, I'm going to do it. Otherwise, I'm going to use MDF because I've got plenty of that uh, for the bottom because it doesn't look that nice. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to cut out the tops of them and then uh, see you after. Okay, so now we have all of this, uh, the base and the top. They're not together yet. Um, the next thing is, is to... Basically, we do have like some chips on them where it would have broken off. See that there? That's a little chip. There's a couple on them. There's another one here. Just where the last bit of the saw, just the resistance from the saw was too strong for the acrylic, so it just snapped. It happened on most of them. It's not the end of the world. And also, you get the really strong saw marks sometimes, you can see there. But basically, what you want to do is you want to go over with a file, make it all really smooth. Then you want to go over with 60 grit sandpaper and slowly make your way to 240. You want to be going with the grain like that or with the with the length of it, same that way. So then you get the nice kind of like soft finish. It almost looks like these. So you will get like a nice border effect when it's lit up. Now for the 60 grit sandpaper, and for most sandpaper I just use like old sanding disc, basically 60 grit and go with the grain so you're trying to get rid of all these saw marks. Once it all looks like it's scratched in that way and you can't see any going the other way, then move to 120 and then 240. And also I kind of round these edges because they are very, like, not very nice to touch. Because I completely forgot about filming, I forgot to film it, but basically what I did is chose what looked nicer at the back or the front, decided this one looked nicer for me, for this one specifically, and then um, drew a shape around so that the sign will fit and have a bit of play so we can have some, you know, so you don't have to like completely measure it and get it accurate and then it's slightly out, just make sure it's got a bit of space around the side, um, and then on the back you want it to be thinner for the switch and cable to come through uh, and when you're designing the width you just want to make sure the switch uh, and the perspex can go still centered and now what we need to do is put this onto here like this and uh, center it every direction so it's dead center draw around it work out a drill bit that's similar size not the exact same size probably slightly smaller drill it at either end, coping saw down the middle and then file out the sides so they're nice pointy keep checking it until then it fits perfectly you don't want to go too big and then it have loads of gaps and not fit nicely you want to go small and expand it out slowly that's always the technique Okay guys, so as you can see it's now coming together, so it all fits, that's that's pressed down and everything, that's how it will go. Um, so basically, as you saw, coping saw down, and then to straighten it up and make it a little bit wider, because I made sure I didn't cut outside the line, um, yep, just using a file, and then to get in the corners, because obviously I, I didn't go all the way to the end of these edges either, um, I got down in the corners using that because obviously that's quite pointy. You can get right in the corner and make a like a V shape in each corner. And then to get it out, I use this one because I can go all the way across and I have a lot of room. And I can go diagonally. And then eventually it expands and expands, and then you can slot it in. 
you don't want it to be loose so that's why it's nice and tight and then it goes in and there you go what we need to do is we need to glue these together and then while you're waiting for that to glue uh, I'm going to cut some 6mm MDF and then that will give it its like enclosure just like the lamps I make if you've seen them uh, you can see how I made those up in here and in the description there's a link to buy them if you really want to and uh, put in the comments down below if you'd like to buy one of these because I'm not sure uh, well obviously there's a few people who have bought them that's why I'm making them but if you'd like to buy one drop in the comments below and I'll be sure to make you one um, for the gluing it's just you know normal wood glue uh, and just a small thin bead around the edge when it comes out but it's flipping freezing Everything froze last night, so all the glue and liquids are really hard. I'm going to have to clamp two of these on top of each other because I've only got two clamps. So, this is my setup at the moment. I've got obviously two there, two there, a bit of wood to try and kind of separate the pressure or spread the pressure out. This one's a bit smaller, I couldn't find another bit of wood. Um, but yeah, so we'll just leave them for a couple of hours and come back and then cut the bases. Okay guys, so what I've done is I've just grabbed one of them, put them on the bit of 6mm MDF, drew around it, and yeah. And now I'm going to cut them out, and as you can see, that's what the front will look like with the 6mm ply, 12mm, and then the 6mm MDF. Okay, so as you can see, um, as you just saw, I just screwed that in, and then that's where the acrylic goes. So now, as you can see, it's like really uneven along these surfaces. See, along there, it sticks out. And yeah, so we're just going to give all of this a sand, and the bottom as well to smooth off the countersinks because it's MDF. And then once we've done that, like I said, we can do the electrics. Okay guys, so this is what it looks like when I've sanded it all down. Looks nice and smooth now. Um, I go up with the sander because I don't have uh, any 60 or 80 grit. I only have 120. So I went to clamping it just there and using a file instead. And then sanded it with the 120. Okay guys, so once it's all like properly sanded down and uh, you're happy with how it feels and everything. <coughs> just pardon me. <coughs> Um, then uh, it's time to now flip it upside down, get a drill with a screw bit in, and take the back off. So once the bottom or back is off, um, obviously this is basically your box. This is the inside of your box. So what we are going to need is obviously an LED strip to light it up. Glue that down to there. You will also need a switch for turning it on and off and obviously some cable and as these are 5 volt LEDs I've got some 5 volt uh, connector which is just a USB basically. So you've got switch over there, cable coming in there and then uh, the cable will come through, the positive will go into the switch, out the switch and into the LEDs and uh, the negative will just go straight to the LEDs. Um, what I'm doing though is I'm going to strip that so it meets the switch and then I'm going to solder a new negative on to reach the rest of the way and then a positive because these cables aren't that long and I don't want to make longer cables because they are long enough if I don't have to put half the cable inside the actual box. But to do that I've just got a bit more 2 core cable. You can use 4 core cable, I think, yeah that one's 4 core but I'll only be using the red and the black from that. Um, it's it's no worries, it's just two wasted cables, it just was a data cable and now it's not. So just before I finish it, <coughs> you've basically seen what I've done, um, and as you can see these are purple, but they're, they're normal red, green, blue, in fact they're not completely normal, because if I make it darker for you lot, you can see like 
purples coming from one LED each. Um, and basically that's these really cool LEDs, they're like really good LEDs because they have each red, green and blue all in the same like module kind of thing. And how I got it purple is obviously by combining the blue and the green but basically so you have the positive and then the negative so the different colours uh, so I just combined the red and the blue um, negatives over. Uh, and then it was as simple as sticking, well marking it the size of this, the where it came through, sticking that down, put a bit of super glue just to make sure that it won't come off. What we need to do is varnish them. So what I use is this ultra durable varnish and it's just oil based and it goes in a thick, it's clear gloss, goes in a thick coat. Uh, I use it for the lamps, you can use whatever though. So what we're going to do is we're going to varnish this and then I have a lamp rack which is basically for drying my lamps, that's what it's originally designed for, but it does work for drying these two because it's just got like little copper pins pointing out and you can just hook one of the copper pins in there and then it will dry like that because uh, therefore you can dry it all at the same time and varnish it all at the same time which speeds up the process especially when you're doing four. Okay guys, so now it's all finished, I've taken the acrylic bits out and uh, now it's time for the varnishing stage and uh, I've just got this 30mm uh, brush so, time lapse of me just basically varnishing this. Okay, guys, so here they all are. Um, they just need super gluing in, uh, which is obviously just put some super glue on the LEDs, put the thing in, and then because of the tightness, because you can pick it up and they're not even super glued yet, uh, because they're secure. They just hold themselves and and then the glue will set and then they won't be able to come out, so that's good. Uh, but I, in the end, just so you know, I did give them a second coat because the first coat didn't even look like they'd been varnished, especially on the MDF. Like I said, it completely absorbs it. Uh, so putting loads on doesn't really help, to be honest. Um, I thought it did, but no, clearly just do two. This one uh, is being redone because uh, it went on the floor and collected loads of sawdust. Uh, and yeah. There they all are, uh, all the cables coming out the back, and I'll give you a test if you want. So if we put this one here, and we grab the USB, and we plug it in instead of that, and then the switch on the back, and there you go. So, yeah, they're, they're, they act like a real light on the top, like it will completely light up something. But when it's just forwards, when you're looking at it, it's a nice subtle light. But it will almost like give the room a glow if, it, if you've got like white walls. It will shine up to the ceiling and glow like a nice purpley colour or whatever colour you've done. And as you can see, it does light up very evenly um, on the letters. And then if it's if it's really dark, which, which it's not. There you go, that's a bit darker. Um, I hope this... Oh God, my hair. Um, has been... Uh, helpful and uh, if you want to build one uh, feel free to build one using this video or if you can't be asked to build one or you don't have anything you can buy one from me and I will make it say whatever you like um, I'll put a link in the description to the website where I sell them um, and you just type in what you want and then it goes to me and I make it and it's 15 quid or you can make it yourself but then you've got to find each bit which I can't be asked to link in the description uh, but it's basically a 5 volt coloured LED strip, um, a Maplin switch, they're the small ones or you can just find a small switch, but the Maplin rocker switch is what I use, uh, even though Maplin doesn't, oh no Maplin is online, I get them from eBay though. Um, and then you want some 12mm clear acrylic perspex, some people know it as, and then you want some of the little file drill bits and you can put them in a normal drill which is what I did originally or you can then invest in a little tool if you're going to be doing it often um, but you can just buy one put the link in the description uh, and yeah um, if you like this video remember to smash the like button hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video next Wednesday